I'm Rome Harris, and this week we'll venture into a modern building unlike any other. At first glance, it seems like a typical administrative building, well-kept, comfortable, organized, and busy. But I quickly found out that this was far beyond that. I walked inside to find a well-lit room filled with students voraciously typing away at computers, immersed in conversation, or lounging upon a seemingly typical couch in the entry room. But nothing was as it appeared. The couch, as it turns out, was completely made of water bottles. The desks that the computers rested on were made from sunflower seeds, and the bright lights that lit the room weren't lights at all, at least not the usual bulbs that you'd find in most college facilities. These lights were in fact solar tubes holding highly reflective material. This unusual scene in the Center for Environmental and Urban Studies at Santa Monica College wasn't unusual at all for the staff members, student workers, and faculty that regularly inhabit it. One of those regular faces introduced herself and offered to bring me further into that unique world. I am Lauren Hollenstein, and I am a student worker here, which is the Center for Environmental and Urban Studies. And I'm also the president of Peak Action Club, which is one of the environmental clubs on campus. This is the Center for Environmental Learning and Urban Studies and it is a living lab, which means that everything in the building is supposed to be an example of sustainable building. Lauren led me past some students reading books with titles like Garbage Land and Hands-On Nature, around a repurposed bookshelf where those books had most likely come from, and into a hallway where a map was placed upon the wall. There she began her tour. The map that we're looking at demonstrates 24 different examples of sustainable building uses from heating and ventilation through to the type of materials used in the building. Most of the materials are recycled materials. So the floor here, these are all repurposed, um, you know, wood. It was all reclaimed from old construction. These are carpet tiles, and so they're individual squares of carpet that's recovered. And if one gets soiled, you can replace just a single piece of the tile rather than the entire carpet. It doesn't require as much of the underlayer, uh, so they're very minimal impact. Up here, these are called parlam. This is what the, the baseboards are made out of. In the frame of the house, this is um, composite wood, so leftover wood has been created together, kind of like particle board, but it's a lot sturdier. These are varieties of different types of insulation. Um, and there's, you know, this is blown fiberglass, touch and seal foam, um, and then this is eco bat insulation, which is actually like recycled materials. So these are different versions of um, insulation and what their different strengths are. Um, if you'll notice, we don't have any lights on inside, but it's still really bright. These are solar tubes, which are kind of like skylights, but the inside is a reflective material, so it illuminates even brighter, and then we can dim them and you know we can open them up wider and they'll be brighter or we can make them narrower and they'll be dimmer if we wanted to have like a movie screening in here or something. The desks here are made out of um, recycled sunflower, uh, this, the, ho the holes from sunflowers and so you know this is just an excess product that would otherwise go to waste when you get the you know sunflower seeds out of their shells so this extra holes are used and then it's compacted together and it's made a desk and what's really funny is we all tell this story but uh, someone overwatered the plant and the desk actually began to sprout. <laughs> so there were sprouts growing out of the desk at one point. Another thing is the heating and the cooling of it. It's all just really good cross breeze and ventilation. We don't have any air conditioning in here, but we get a nice cross breeze, lots of open doors and windows. The heating, however, um, this is all of our computer towers. So all of the towers are in here. All the heat that's created from them is stored underground. And then when we want to use the heat in the building, we turn it on and all that stored heat underground uh, heats the building just from our computer towers. It works really, really well. Solar panels on the roof, obviously. We can turn the water heater on and off so we don't waste energy heating the water. We turn it on in the morning so we get hot water out of the sink only when we turn it on. We have low flow toilets. There's two different options for waste and solids. So you're using less water. Lots of indoor plants, which increases getting toxins out of the air. This is low VOC paint, which is volatile organic compounds. So, you know, there's no additives in here that are toxic for us to breathe. Different forms of insulation. This is uh, cotton insulation. This is recycled denim. So this is all recycled denim. 
And that is wood insulation. So those are all recycled materials um, to form alternative forms of insulation instead of that foam insulation that a lot of people use that can be toxic. This is a recycled door that we turned into a table. This couch is made out of recycled plastic water bottles. Those were uh, shelves that we turned into a bench. That's about it. I was blown away by the seamless level of innovation and practicality masked into the wonderland of green culture. When I first arrived, I had to ask where I was because the integration of all the building's advanced systems were so smoothly executed that I hardly even noticed they were there. It wasn't until I picked up on all the small rectangular blue signs around the room with titles like Bamboo Cabinets, Worm Composting, and Energy Star that I realized that I had arrived at that truly amazing place. As I prepared to leave, I asked Lauren why it was so important that this revolutionary culture was a part of her life and why it should be a part of ours. The overall scientific community agrees that climate change is real and it's happening and it is human caused and it's really important for people to recognize that we're almost kind of living on borrowed time and it's it's just important for people to realize that they need to make changes but it doesn't have to be a scary thing it doesn't have to be a burdensome thing and i think that's the really important thing is that people are slowly realizing that you can make simple changes in your life that are profoundly effective and you can make a really positive impact with very minimal changes, like reusing water bottles and getting a reusable water bottle and not buying plastic. There's little things that you can do and, you know, buying one less thing or maybe removing meat from your lifestyle one day a week or something like that. There's huge impacts you can make from small changes because we, as a whole, we really need to make changes for our own quality of life, and it, it greatly affects our own quality of life, and, and I think that uh, people are slowly beginning to realize that. I mean, we're gonna have a crazy wet winter, our, our temperatures are changing here, we have mosquitoes here for the first time, which is not a Los Angeles thing. I think we're slowly starting to really see these things happening, and the good thing is, is people are recognizing they need to make these changes, and so I think that it's important, and the reason I want to go into it is I want to find ways that are easy for people to make those changes and make that a, a part of our whole paradigm. The Center for Environmental and Urban Studies is a model example for the practical changes necessary to get to the paradigm that Lauren mentioned. If we open our minds to new ideas like the people there have, then the potential for our planet and our people is endless. One day, this unusual building may not be so unusual at all. Thank you for exploring this brave new green world with me. I'm Rome Harris, and this has been an Exploration Post audio news story.